I've on page two and I'm already disturbed. I don't know why I decided to read this before bed. Sometimes a life is awful and you can do nothing about it. someone who hasn't really read a lot of horror books. I don't really have a lot of experience with scary stories. So I thought for this video I would subject myself to that for you guys. Hello, my name is Leonie. Happy to see you back on my channel again if you're new here. Welcome! Um, and in this video I'm going to be reading a short story a day to really get myself in the Halloween mood, right? I've picked out a bunch of scary short stories that I want to read and we'll just go through them from what I think are gonna be the least scary ones to the scariest ones um, to see how scared I get and how fast. The video itself is not gonna be scary, so don't worry if you don't like scary things. It's just gonna be a chill, spooky vibe and you get to see me read books that I find scary. The first short story collection that I want to read a few stories from is by Thomas Ligotti. It is called Songs of a Dead Dreamer. There's a foreword in this by Jeff Vandermeer. If you don't know, Jeff Vandermeer wrote Annihilation. I haven't read the book, but the movie from the book is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It really has that existential horror, cosmic horror vibe, and apparently Thomas Ligotti has that as well. So that's why I think I might really enjoy this, but I'm not really sure how scary they're gonna be. Then I also really want to read something by Edgar Allan Poe. I know he's like the king of the short horror stories, so I'm also going to be reading something by Edgar Allan Poe. Not sure which one yet. And then Something that I'm very excited about is that I'm finally going to be reading short stories by Junji Ito. Junji Ito is a manga artist and I think that's gonna take it up a notch, you know, when it, it's actually going to have scary images in it. And a lot of you guys have been telling me to read something by Junji Ito, so... I'm probably going to be reading from Shiver, which according to you guys is the best short story collection to start with. Okay, so I hope you're gonna enjoy this video. Let's go. Hello, welcome. It is Monday, the first day of the week. Let's keep it small for our first day, okay? I'm going to pick a story from Thomas Ligotti's anthology of short stories. So the book is split into three parts of short stories. Dreams for sleepwalkers, dreams for insomniacs, and dreams for the dead. Maybe every day we can read one of these three themes and then today we will start with one of the dreams for sleepwalkers. Um, I'm just gonna choose one with a title that sounds fun. There's one called Alice's Last Adventure. I don't know if that's a nod to Alice in Wonderland, but I really like Alice in Wonderland and I think it has great potential for weird chaotic horror retellings. So I think I'm going to be reading Alice's Last Adventure. It is 18 pages. not scared yet. <laughs> so in this story we follow Alice because she is named after Alice from Alice in Wonderland because her father was a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland but now she is old. She used to write children's stories and for some reason things in her life are just starting to get very weird. Curiouser and curiouser if you will. I like that the story had a lot of nods to Alice in Wonderland, innocence and like the bizarre wonderful world of children and like adulthood being kind of boring um, and I really like those aspects but other than that nothing much has happened to me yet. It didn't, it didn't impact me. 
So yeah, I'm not scared yet. Tomorrow we will read another one. And we'll see if it's scarier. <laughs> So I decided to read the next Thomas Ligotti story before going to bed because I thought maybe if I read it before bed that'll make it a little bit scarier for me. Um, what I didn't expect is that that just resulted in me forgetting everything as I was extremely sleepy as I read it. <laughs> I genuinely do not remember what this was about. It, it has just left my brain instantly and I think that's a bad sign because apparently it did not impact me the way a scary story should impact you. But then the third story that I read from Dreams for the Dead was The Greater Festival of Masks and this one was the best one so far. I was reading this as I was sitting on the train and I was genuinely freaked out a little bit. We follow a man in this small town and he enters a mask shop where the first mask he tries on just perfectly fits his face as if it was made for him. I won't say what's gonna happen next because that will be a little bit of a spoiler but this one? Mm, freaky. The strong point of this story is that everything is completely unknown. We don't know what's going on in this small town that our main character is in. It appears to be abandoned. The garden that he crosses through feels like a liminal space. You don't understand anything of what's going on and you also don't actually get an answer to that. And to me, that is what makes a good scary story. The scariest thing to me is the unknown. Not a monster that's hiding in a dark or a murderer that's after you, but just the unknown especially if it's a supernatural kind of unknown and that's what's going on here and that's also what thomas Lugotti is known for so that's what i was really hoping to get out of these and i'm very happy that i finally did get that in the third story also something that i noticed while reading that book is that one of the things that can make you scared is just the genre awareness i was reading the story and the moment the scene happened where the main character puts on this mask and it fits perfectly that's the moment where you're like, oh, something's going on. Something's freaky going on here. But if I were to just be reading a romance book or just contemporary literature, something like that, you know, a mask shop and a mask just fitting perfectly wouldn't be scary. That wouldn't start ringing any bells. But because I know I'm reading a story that is supposed to be scary, when that happens, something in my brain is like, oh, something's off here. Something's freaky gonna happen. And I think it's funny how being aware of the genre that you're reading makes you perceive situations differently and it's what makes the scary story scary sometimes. Anyway, that was it for Thomas Ligotti. Tomorrow on my train ride I will pick up an Edgar Allan Poe story because he is of course the classic author. He is known for his short scary stories so I'm excited to find out um, how scary they really are gonna be. Okay, so today I dabbled in Edgar Allan Poe. I have read The Raven. Ooh, oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my God, this is literally perfect timing. I will open this for you. 
when I I will first talk about Edgar Allan Poe. I dabbled into Edgar Allan Poe. I have only ever read the Telltale Heart of him for English class, and I do remember enjoying that short story. And I like his vibes. I ended up choosing Berenice, published in 1835. So the story we follow in Berenice is this kind of secluded loner boy and Berenice is his cousin but as they grew up Berenice kind of ended up being a little stranger with the day. And the short story just follows our main character talking about Berenice and the weird encounters that he has with her and the scary part of this is that this really it really works with these this imagery of teeth and I don't know what it is about teeth. This is gonna sound psychotic as I say it, but I think it's aesthetically pleasing <laughs> in like a creepy way. Like any creepy thing that uses teeth in its imagery, I'm a fan. I like it. It's gross and weird, but in an aesthetic way. So the vibes, I liked them. Um, and I do really want to say, the main thing that I loved about this so far is that it is beautifully written. It is so beautifully written that sometimes I kind of forgot that I was reading like a story that is supposed to be scary. I mean, it is very clearly filmed in the 19th century, so it's pretty wordy, not necessarily easy to get through, but ooh, is it worth it? The great thing is that I found these stories on postories.com, which is a website completely dedicated to Edgar Allan's Poe stories, and you can also sometimes click on the words uh, that they thought would be difficult words, and they give a little bit of explanation with the word, which is really great, um, especially if English is not your first language. Uh, you can find all of his stories on there because I'm pretty sure they are in the public domain. But I really had a nice experience reading this book. It still wasn't very scary. I liked it because the atmosphere was there. It kind of takes place in this large house. There are cloisters. There's this imagery of the teeth that I am somehow enjoying a lot. <laughs> and there are so many references to other pieces of literature and then the website gives a little bit of an explanation and then I also learn a little bit from it and it just you know it keeps you engaged and it keeps you really enjoying such a short story. Sometimes Edgar Allan Poe just makes shit up. He mentioned a ge geographer Ptolemy Hephaestion and then you click on it and it says that Poe just invented a geographer it just says apparently this person does not exist. Poe just invented a geographer character so he could refer to this character in his stories. I'm still just not really scared and I don't know if that is just because they are written stories and there's something about written down stories that just doesn't hit as hard as a movie and I think that maybe this is because if you're reading you have so much control over how you are experiencing the story. It's not as scary because you can just stop reading. So much of fear when you're watching a movie is not knowing what's gonna happen next and not really having control over it because the movie just goes. But when you're reading, you have full control over what's going to happen. And I just find myself not really being as scared. Um, and I do think this has something to do with it because the only time that I remember being scared while reading was while I was listening to an audiobook. And that was the audiobook for Truly Devious, which is not a scary book at all. But I remember listening to that book and just being pretty scared because there was a tense moment and I didn't know what was going to happen, but the audiobook was just like, it just kept going. So it felt scarier. And sometimes it's the visuals that can be very scary. And again, with reading, you have full control over how you envision things. That being said, this is why I think the next book that I'm going to be reading might really be the scariest thing that I'm going to be reading for this video. Um, and it is in this package. So let's open it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a color change. Let's go for blue blue. We are finally reading a short stories by Junji Ito. Already the cover is making me particularly uneasy. It's been a long time since I read a manga so I kind of have to get used again to the fact that I have to read it the other way around. 
I just so have the feeling that because the drawings are scary, I'm going to be more scared while reading this. Oh, there's even sketches in there. That's pretty cool, actually. getting scary i don't know why i decided to read this before bed i got a little i guess i got a little cocky after not being scared of those first of those first horror stories so i thought oh i can read a little bit before bed it's fine this one is a, it's a little scary it's a little bit scary so far let me just keep reading. should not be reading these before bed. <laughs> I did not get nightmares, so don't worry about me. But yeah, reading it before bed definitely made it scarier. And I did look at the door a few times, hoping no one would come in and kill me. <laughs> so I read the first short story, which is Used Record. It's about this used record that makes anyone who listened to it want to keep listening to it and not give the give the record away and the song on the record is very weird and i won't spoil why <laughs> there's a reason that it's so weird and it's kind of scary i think this first short story that i read is a perfect example of japanese horror a lot of japanese horror differs itself from western horror in the sense that it's often very cyclical it's about some kind of curse some kind of supernatural thing that is hurting people and at the end it just doesn't get solved. You just know that a new cycle of the exact same thing is gonna happen again. Uh, just think of like famous Japanese horror movies like The Ring or The Grudge. They do this thing where you no one can ever get out and the story just follows one cycle. And that's exactly, exactly how it went in this first short story used record. And that's the scary part because the message is like, well, sometimes a life is awful and you can do nothing about it. Now, what I'm gonna do now is look up which one of these short stories is considered the scariest, and I will read that. Okay, so unsurprisingly, opinions vary on which one is the scariest, but the one that I seen being mentioned the most was this one, Hanging Balloons, which I think is also on the cover. Yeah, this one. Hanging Balloons. Looks so fun. <laughs> Ooh, Hanging Blimp. The art style is beautiful. Okay, I'm going to read this. Imagine just walking on the street <laughs> and you just see a random huge floating head. What is this? <laughs> a fourth into the story and I'm Getting uncomfortable. So far, this story kind of has the same vibe as Attack on Titan, with these huge faces that you know if you see them, you're, you're gonna die. So apparently this one, Hanging Blimp, was inspired by a dream that Junji Ito once had. This one's pretty good. Not super scary, but definitely very disturbing. It had Attack on Titan vibes and it definitely had that same thing as I just mentioned where something happens and you just know you're gonna die. And there's nothing you can do about it. And that's the horror aspect. The last one that I'm going to be reading is another one that was mentioned quite often. It is fashion model. This one apparently has a very popular character in it with a very scary face. 
that Junji Ito is known for. I'm not a fan of scary faces. Those are the kind of things that stick on my retina, get burned into my eyelids, um, and I get scared of them late at night. So let's read that one. Fashion model. I've on page two and I'm already disturbed. I, I'm going to assume that this face is only going to get scarier. Eh, okay. <laughs> you know, in books you can't really have jump scares and I am of the opinion that a good horror movie does not need to rely on jump scares. Um, but in books you can't really have jump scares. But I realized if you have a manga like this, the literary equivalent of a jump scare is that you turn the page and there's a... <laughs> large scary panel staring right at you. I have a bad feeling. <laughs> so cute. So cute. This one was a little bit more traditional scary monster horror vibes, but I think this was a good example of how manga or just like graphic stories can really add to the horror aspect because I do, I haven't mentioned this yet, but the art style is wonderful and sometimes gets really creepy. This is an example. Um, if you're squeamish, skip ahead five seconds, but look. I think this is very nicely done and definitely scary. <laughs> so, bunch of horror stories read. Although Edgar Allan Poe wasn't scary, I do love his vibes, so I do definitely want to probably get my hand. No, I don't even need to get a physical copy of his books because genuinely that website that I used was so useful. But thank you to everyone who kept recommending Junji Ito to me. I can't believe it took me so long to pick him up, but... I cannot wait to read more. Um, I say that I can't wait as if it's super fun and cute to read him, but it's not. It's making me feel disturbed, but in a good way. If you want to see all of my other bookish videos in which I usually read all kinds of genres, make sure you subscribe and you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I hope you will have a wonderful rest of your day. Maybe it's Halloween when you're watching this. Um, if you're celebrating it, I hope you have a great spooky day. And that being said, um, I hope to see you again next week with another video. Goodbye. <laughs>